This is a public service announcement. Please, please stop using texture and clarity to try to bring out details in your photographs in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. There is a much better way. Typically in my critique sessions, I see a lot of images that look like this. The clarity is really heightened, the texture is really heightened, and why would someone do that? Well, when we look at the image, you can see around the image that we get a lot more detail in here. If we set this back to zero, we get a lot more detail in here when we have this set to 100. Now in the texture and the clarity, it really boosts that uh, detail in there. And this happens in macro photography all the time. It happens in every photography. All the, a lot of critique sessions that I do, I see this really high contrast look in the detail areas. And what I know what they're doing. They're hiking up the texture, hiking up the clarity to try and get more detail in the image. And really, yes, you get it, but the downside, what do you get with that? What sacrifice do you get from that benefit? Well, the sacrifice that you get from that benefit is that this area in the background that should have this clean blur, this bouquet effect, is gone and we're trying to create detail where detail is not supposed to exist okay so i'm going to go ahead and press okay on this and i'm going to show you that there is a better way okay this is the nasty way this is the not so good way i'm going to show you a better way so let's actually label this so i'll just call this acr okay now the way i do this is in photoshop it's not in adobe camera Raw or lightroom i guess you could essentially do something very similar uh, by creating a mask and using adobe camera Raw as a filter but still there's a better way to get detail out of your images and it's using the high pass filter and the linear light blend mode. Now, before you skip this, because you've seen it before, I'm going to point out exactly what's happening with all of this stuff going on here and why it's beneficial to do it in Photoshop versus doing it in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So essentially what I need to do is bring out the detail in this macro shot. Now, these are pretty interesting. It looks like like a, like someone's putting up their dukes, right? Well, this is actually broccoli at 5x macro. Really cool how these individual little uh, leaves on the on the broccoli look almost like little tiny Brussels sprouts. Imagine that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna duplicate this background layer. I'm gonna press Control J. That's Command J on a Mac. Okay. Now what I need to do to this is I need to desaturate this layer because I don't want any color information in it. So I'm gonna press Control Shift U. That's Command Shift U on a Mac. And then I'm going to change this to the linear light blend mode. It's not going to look good. It's not supposed to look good, but what does it kind of look like? It kind of looks like that amount of clarity that you get here in Adobe camera Raw, just not quite as strong. If you could take clarity to the thousand, that's essentially what it would be. So let's do this. Let's go to filter. Let's go to other, and let's go to high pass. Now, when you set this as a high pass, I'm going to explain all this in a second, but what we need to do is set this anywhere between two to three pixels. It's going to vary depending on the image that you have. So if you have a very large image, say something from like a 60 megapixel image, what you're essentially going to have to do is increase that radius to a higher radius. But if you have a 24 megapixel image, then I would want to go with maybe one or two pixels or something like that. So depending on how big the image is, is going to dictate how far you push this. The smaller the megapixels, the smaller the number, the bigger the megapixels, the further you can push it a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this at about three pixels. That's about the sweet spot for what I'm trying to do. And I'll press OK. Now, this is essentially going to be global. It's going to affect everything, just like texture and clarity. But look at the amount of detail that I get in that. And I don't make the sacrifice of getting that extra crunchy kind of clarity that we get here, where it gets really dark and really pitted. And it basically makes it look like a granola bar instead of like this nice clean cake batter that I would want. Okay. Crunchy. That's essentially what we get from texture and clarity is crunchiness in our image. And we don't want that. We want cake batter. We want smooth, but we want the detail to be where we want the detail to be. Okay. So then essentially what I would do with this is I would make a mask for this and then paint in with white wherever I would want that to be. Now, if you press alt or option and then click on your mask, it's automatically going to be a black mask, which just makes this easier for me. Cause then now when I press B for my brush tool and make my brush larger, and I'm set to the white tonal value or color, I guess, if you want to call it that, I can just paint in where I want that detail. And I just want it on those fists, those little broccoli fists that are coming out to pick a fight with your mouth. Now that looks great. Okay, and here's the, the added benefit that I get. I get the texture, but I don't get that sharpness that happens to that bouquet area that should be clean and smooth like cake batter. Here's the kicker for this though you also get the option to adjust the fill. So this actually acts like a sharpening slider for you. If we bring the fill all the way down to zero, what's happening, linear light 
replaces its algorithm that it uses to blend the layers with fill, not with opacity. It does it with opacity to a degree, but fill dictates the algorithm and how this layer is going to mathematically blend with the layer below it. So as I increase the fill, you can see I get my texture and I can get the sweet spot of exactly where I want it to be. Now, one way that I take this to even another level is I make sure that it does not affect the shadow areas in the image and only affects the midtones and the highlights because shadows are typically where noise exists. So I wouldn't want this after I painted it on there to be in there. And how do I make sure that it only affects the midtones and the highlights? Well, with my blend if panel, I can just press this button right here that says no darks. And that makes sure that this high pass layer is only affecting the midtone values and the highlight values of my image. And if I need to see exactly where that's gonna be, I press the overlay button and that will show me on here exactly where that is going to be affected. Okay, now we could essentially double click this and go into blend if, and then move the blend if sliders here to do the same exact thing. But to me, that's archaic now that I've got this wonderful panel here. And if you're interested in that panel, there'll be uh, a link to it in the description below to an exclusive offer for you as well. So let's talk about this. We need to get a little nerdy so that we can dive in and see exactly what is happening to the uh, details in this image to get them so brilliantly without using something like Adobe Camera or Lightroom. There's two things that are happening here. We have the linear light blend mode and we have the high pass adjustment. Let's break them down. And to do that, let's first talk about the high pass adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and take the mask off of here, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and increase the fill all the way up and change this back to normal. Okay, and then I'll also reset anything that's happening with blend if. This is a high pass adjustment. What we've done with this high pass adjustment is we started with a black and white or desaturated copy of all of our work. When we change this to high pass, what it's doing is it's making everything 50% gray. And then it's finding the edge work. Anything that is an edge, you'll see here in this. So if we zoom in here, you see that this is where the edge work is. Essentially what this high pass filter is doing is it's giving the illusion of sharpness. It's giving the illusion of texture. And how does it give us that illusion? Well, what it's doing is it's making the edges lighter on the light side of that edge and darker on the dark side of that edge. That's really important because the next thing that we need to talk about is the linear light blend mode. How the heck does the linear light blend mode then take that information and turn it into beautiful textured detail? Well, linear light blend mode is actually a combination of linear burn and linear dodge. So what are we doing here? We're microscopic dodging and burning automatically. And that's what's creating this illusion of sharpness. Let's take a look at this in a landscape image. Let's take the nerdy glasses off too. In a landscape image, this is Spirit Falls from the Columbia River Gorge. Now, in photographing this image, I had a very difficult time because the wind was blowing, the water is moving, and it would have been very difficult for me to focus stack this properly without having a lot of issues to deal with. So I didn't bother focus stacking it. Instead, I placed my focus to about this area right here because that's the area where the viewer is led into. Knowing full well that I have tools and strategies to bring details out where I might need details in the future. I don't mind this being a little bit more blurred in the background. I don't need everything to be in focus, okay? But this rock right here, I do want this to have more detail in it. And that's where this technique is wonderful. So what we're going to do here is we're going to press Command or Control J to duplicate this layer. We're going to press Control Shift U. That's Command Shift U on a Mac. That will automatically desaturate this layer so we don't have to use any adjustment layers to do it. Then we change this to the linear light blend mode. Now of all the blend modes, you might be thinking, well, Blake, soft light does something very similar. It does, but it's not going to create the high level of detail that we need like we get from the linear light blend mode. So then let's go up to filter, other, and then high pass. Okay, let's check, just keep this high pass at about three pixels, press okay. Now, if we look around this image globally, look at how this rock, this is the before, this is the after, oh my gosh. Look at how much detail we have in that rock. Now, what you will also find with this is that you do get haloing around edges. That's why this technique is not meant to use globally. Actually, I would say all sharpening should not be used globally at all, period, ever. That's your other public service announcement, okay? If you're going to be doing sharpening, it's much better for you to do that sharpening in Photoshop and do it locally, not globally so the entire image gets affected, but locally so that you can mask in exactly where you want that texture and detail to be. Now let's take a look at some of the other areas in the image. Look at this area right here. 
just these little hairs started to come to life. See how we talked about what does the high pass do? It creates more light on the light edge and more darkness on the dark edge. So if we look at this, the side of this, this is getting a lot more light than it had before. Some would argue probably too much light because it looks crunchy, exactly what I told you not to do. So what do we do? Well, Phil controls the algorithm. So we start heavy, we start really heavy. That's how I like to do my editing. Start heavy, taper down. Start heavy, taper down. So it's at 100%. We'll just bring this all the way down to zero and then we'll dial in where we want that detail to be. So it looks natural and we get a really natural look in there. And again, we do not want this to be global. We want this to be local because we want to be the ones who paint in where this detail goes, right? That's something you cannot do in Adobe Camera or Lightroom. Some would argue that you can use the masking tools and use sharpening and texture and clarity in, the, in those tools to do something very similar. And yes, you can do that, but those tools don't work nearly as fast and as heavy handed as this linear light blend mode does. And then also give you the ability to what? Block out your shadows? Yeah, you could use a luminosity uh, mask added to that mask in Adobe Camera or Lightroom, but now we're getting even more confusing and you're just better off doing it in Photoshop anyway because the detail is better to begin with. Now, if we press Alt or Option and we add a mask here, that is going to give us a black mask, B for our brush tool, and then I'm gonna zoom in on this rock to make sure I don't get any haloing edges, and I'm gonna brush in on this rock with a smaller brush on exactly where I want that detail to be. Look at that, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Now, you're gonna see this on a portrait, and what I do with this on the portrait, you're gonna be like, man, yep, you are right, Blake. And I'm gonna say, you know, sometimes I come up with some good ideas. You know, sometimes I, I, I swing and miss. Sometimes I hit a home run. And then I'm gonna brush here. Home runs aren't as usual. And then I'm gonna brush here to get that detail back. And then move over here and brush in to get that detail back. Now, if we try to do this on an area where detail is not, perfect example right here, this is blurry. This should not be getting sharpened. So I'm gonna brush this away. This should be blurry. We should not be trying to sharpen things that do not have texture and detail to begin with. If it's an area that is out of focus because of the aperture that you use, leave it out of focus, okay? Don't try to sharpen that. It's like you're trying to do too much. You're trying to be something that you're not, okay? And we don't wanna do that. We wanna be real with people. All right, so now let's move this over. I'm gonna look back here too, see if there's any detail. Oops, I don't wanna pull that all the way out. See if there's any detail back here that I might be able to pull out with this too. You know, and brushing here. Look at that, even back here, way back here, I'm able to pull out detail back here that is really nice and be a good treat for the viewer. And again, we do want to brush in many of the areas that look similar to it. I'm not gonna do it over these branches because if I do it over these branches, guess what? I'm trying to sharpen things that shouldn't be sharpened, okay? Back here, this should be an area of blur and we should leave it as is, okay. And all that looks pretty good there. You wanna see how I'd use this on a portrait, okay. So this image is a perfect example. I actually searched Adobe stock for a very long time looking for the perfect example because when I do portrait work and I'm retouching portrait faces, the thing that I want to be in focus and to be in detail for the individual that's looking at it are gonna be the eyes, okay? The eyebrows, maybe the, the tip of the nose and like underneath the nose and then the lips and the teeth and so on and so forth. And maybe the hair or the fingernails or whatever I wanna draw the viewer's eye to. Now, this is a perfect example where you can see that they more than likely did some frequency separation here to get this level of detail. But look at the eyes, look at the eyes themselves. There's barely any detail there, almost to the point that those eyes look a little bit out of focus, don't they? So let's see if we can get that back. I'm gonna press Command or Control J to duplicate this layer. Again, we're gonna do Control Shift U, Command Shift U on a Mac. Change this to the linear light blend mode. Go to the filter, go to other, and go to high pass. And you can change this, I would change this for this image to about five, okay? Because I really wanna bring out some detail in an area where we don't have any at all. Press OK, and then press Alt or Option and click on your mask. Now, we brush in. I'm going to use a pen for this, and I brush in with a very small brush. If people are wondering what pen I use, it's still the XP Pen Star G640, the craziest, simplest, most inexpensive tablet you can buy. I did a video on it three years ago. I'm still using the exact same one to date. Okay, so now I'm going to brush in here and just brush in very, very delicately around the areas where I want that to come back and get that detail in her eyes. And they are looking gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now that might be a little bit too strong, but that's okay. What do we want? We always wanna start out heavy because we know that linear light is controlled by what? 
fill. So now we take the fill and we drop this fill and we can get that detail exactly where we want it to be. Here is no detail in it at all. And here's more detail, and more detail, and more detail. Look at that. That is looking wonderful. And again, if I only want this to affect the midtones and the highlights of that eye, I can say no darks. And we, it just kind of tapers that off a little bit, polishes it a little bit, so that this is only affecting the midtones and the highlights of that. Again, that's using Blend If. I could do the archaic method of using Blend If by double clicking the layer, or I can use this fancy, beautiful new panel right here. You could obviously go into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter and do something similar with the texture and the clarity. But I can guarantee you this, those sliders don't go far enough in the right direction. What I mean by that is they don't go far enough into those detail areas like the high pass adjustment layer does. When we couple that with linear light and blend if and masking, we get beautiful local sharpening exactly where we need it. It might not be easier than Adobe Camera Raw, but it's definitely a better effect. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things like this in Photoshop, make it seemingly simple so you can use it in your workflow today.